Hi folks, welcome back to Elvis Garage. Hope you're okay. Now, just want to answer a quick question. Somebody sent me a question just a couple of days ago asking, how do you prep your bike for winter if you're going to ride it right through? Well, first of all, if you're going to ride your bike right through the winter, I'm already impressed because that's what I do. It's fantastic. I even ride in the snow and the ice because it's all part of the fun. I love it. Um, there are precautions you can take, but I want to make a point very clear. If you're going to ride your bike right through the year, all through the snow and the ice and, and the winter and the worst of the cold and the, 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 the rain and the hail, all of those things will put your bike through more weather than it's been used to in the summer. But everything else is the same. It really is. You do the same things you normally do. Loop your chain. Check it's adjusted. Check your tyre pressures. All the pre-ride checks we did recently, that's what you do. You don't do anything different. Just more of it. It's as simple as that. Keeping it clean can help. Um, so what I want to do is go through a few little things. You mentioned the person who asked me this mentioned uh, ACF 50, and I want to go promoting products, but I just want to mention it because it's a it's a, a really amazing product, and I've used it in the past. And I'm going to show you just a couple of things that I do in the winter time that I don't do in the summer that just helps keep the old Rat Bandit on the road. So there you go. Stick around. Stay tuned. See what happens. I want to keep this brief because I want to do a bit of work on the trailer today. So just got home from a little ride and as is evident there, I've just rinsed off the back end of the old bike, all in there. I really should have probably bothered to film it, but I didn't. Kind of rinse around the front, rinse around the front of the engine, stick the old jet wash in around the brakes and just make sure that all the grit and the crap that sticks to the bike from the road all up under there is off. Because when you get home and it's all soaking wet still, it's all loose, it just rinses off. And all I do is I've just got one of them. Ain't any harder than that. Just get the old hose out, stick it on like a sharp blast and just blast it all off. That's the first thing. Every time you come home from a ride, every single time, no matter what, just blast it all off. That grit and that sand, get it off. Another little thing to pay attention to is in the winter time, is this area. Now obviously the road grit and water contains mud, all sorts of crap, and it gets on your fork sliders and it dries, and the wind going at it dries it, and that turns it into a crust, and that crust gets dragged into your fork seals and it wears them out. In fact, it will lacerate them in a matter of weeks. So a lot of the time, you'll find you see bikes on parked up. You're gonna look at the winter time, you're gonna look at dirty bikes, you look at this point of the bike here, and you see this thick line around here where they've been riding it with all the crud on the fork slider, and it's hard, it comes like a crust, and that's all bad. So what you do to remedy it, very simply, every time I ride, every time I come home at night, I use that. Now this is my little row of soldiers, OCD or what. I use all these things, you can do what you like, but WD-40 is good because winter time, the old WD, it goes in the lock, in the tank lock. A mate of mine, George, recently, he went out with one of his buddies for a ride and he got to a petrol station, gas station, went to put the key in the lock to open the cap and snapped it off and it cost him a day's faffing around to go all the way back to his house and get another key. The reason being, the lock was probably seized up. So in the winter time, your locks will seize. So keep them filled up with something like that. But this is the one I wanna make the point about because this stuff is great. It's got PTFE and it doesn't dry. And what I do is I just spray a bit on the fork legs and leave it on there when I come home. Now in the morning, that's all dried away or you can dry the water off first, whatever. But that keeps the fork legs kind of slimy. And then when you go out for a ride, you get a ring, like a tide line, around your fork leg, and that prevents the road crud from drying. It stays like a soft putty. And then when you come home, you just get a cloth, you wipe it off, and you've got clean fork legs. So every time you start a ride in the morning, you've got brand new clean fork legs. Now this is more important, even more important, if you've got Yoda upside downies. Now, fork legs like that, they're even more in the weather. So obviously keeping those clean is essential. So just spray them with a little bit of that. Obviously you've got the discs behind there, so use your brains, slip a bit of cardboard in, behind the mud guard, up round, behind there, cover. And obviously that piece of cardboard protects the disc because it sits in the back there. And then, and then you just spray, just a little tiny, nothing much and then wipe it around with your finger and that stays soft and just keep it off. So the principle of keeping your fork sliders 
oily with something wet. Don't use this stuff because it runs down your fork leg and gets on your brakes. I always use GT85, good stuff. Chain lube, been there, done that, seen that, you know what I mean. Keep your chain lubed. And yes, to someone else asked, I do lube my chain at the end of every single ride. I get home, I give it one pass. Just hold it on there, spray the chain right the way around once. That's it, and every single ride. Remember, guys are chain oilers, their chains are being oiled all the time. Someone said, oh, I thought you just oiled your chain once every 500 miles. Well, you can do that if you wish. Chains aren't that expensive. You can always go replacing them. Brake cleaner. Now this stuff's good because when you go to your bike, yo bobbins, get it in the bobbins, do that trick with the bolt, but mine are kept clean. So I can do it by hand. And that keeps the brake bobbins moving, keeps the disc moving around. Doesn't hurt to get it in there. Get it up there so it's running out under the disc. Keeps all that build up of winter salt off your discs. So carburetor and brake cleaner, good stuff. And it dries away, it's quite safe. Grease, excellent. Just a dab of grease on the bolt ends, uh, all the exposed bits and bolts. Rat bikes don't really matter, but you've got a nice shiny bike, then obviously, you know, little bolt heads, things that are exposed just keep them greased up. So grease, brake cleaner, chain lube, WD-40, GT-85. Really they're quite closely related but there are preferences. I have a preference to this stuff for my fork sliders because it dries away better and it leaves a nice oily residue. That tends to run down the forks. And finally, the mighty ACF-50. What is this stuff? Well, I have no idea. I know it's bloody amazing. It's about 15 pounds for a tin like that. It's nothing expensive. But you spray it on and if you just read about it really, you know, all I can say with that is Google it because I'm not going to give an advert for ACF. I used to use that when I had a shiny Harley. I put it all around my chrome wheels and stuff. Great. Come the spring, pain in the backside. Trying to get it off you need, in the end I was using this stuff to get it off. That's the only thing that would get it off. That's a nightmare. And I was worried that the weather and the wheat, the, the, the wind and the weather is going to beat through it and then it's getting underneath it. So it's not necessarily the good protectant you think it is, but it's meant to be a protectant for internal things that don't get seen. So if you've got a big fairing on a big fairing bike, take the fairing off, spray it all underneath, and then put the fairing back on, excellent. But trying to use it on chromey wheels, it just collects dirt because it stays sticky, it never dries. But that is ACF 50, yes you can use it, yes it's an absolutely amazing product, very expensive, use it sparingly. I think somebody asked me some advice on how to use it, I've only used it once and I regretted it because it was I poured it on thick. So all I would say is use it really sparingly. Don't get over enthusiastic with it because it will you will regret it when you come to get it off. A little bit of GT85 on your fork legs, WD40 in your locks, keep them all frozen, freed up, chain lube on your chain, brake cleaner on your brakes. Now that little row of soldiers and some grease as well, they will keep your bike reasonably in order. They will keep all the moving bits moving and doing their job and not corroding. The other thing is, I think we, we did this on the brake parts thingy, is get a tyre gauge and get a foot pump. And every day before you go out, check your tyre pressures and with that pump them up if they're not right. Because the correct tyre pressure means a lot, more so in the winter than it does in the summer. One of them doesn't hurt you. Use it sparingly, don't go pressure washing water straight into bearings, don't go playing a high pressure washer inside wheel bearings and things because you're just asking for trouble you're going to cause them to rust but you can use it to wash off crap and dust however just a fast hose pipe is pretty good so that's it that's my winter regime so to that guy who asked there you are mate i'm sorry i don't remember your name that's all i do i just have a little row of soldiers like that and they do the job for me they always live up on the shelf like that every time i come home at night bike comes in up on the two paddock stands spin the chain round squirt 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 go through my little system wipe off the excesses and that's it. The only other thing is if you've got a nice bike, unlike that pile, then wash it as well. Keep it clean, keep the dirt off it and ride safe. Right, let's get on with some work on the trailer. All right, back to business on the old trailer. Um, this has been loads of fun so far and, and last I've got to, at last, I've got to this fun part. I wanna put these on today. Um, I've been promising it for ages and talking about it for too long, too long and I think it's time. I'll sort of stand it there, hang on. And that's the kind of idea, one on each corner, a bit kind of Munsters esque. So, now they're quite solid, and the task I face really again is one of legality and safety because obviously that's a protrusion sticking upwards, and if anybody falls on that, I don't really want it too strong. 
So the idea is to make it reasonably expendable so they'll snap off or fold over. Now, I don't want them on rubber, I thought to probably put them on some sort of pulling in cord thingy jig. Um, if anyone's ever seen them little them little dolls where you uh, you press up underneath and then the little man falls over, you let the spring out and it all stands back up because it pulls a cord down inside. I kind of tried to design that but so they'd fall over if you fell on them but then hold themselves up which would be cool but obviously you're right on the road and they're going to just be doing that the whole time which would look even more daft than the trailer already does. So what I've got to do is fit them in a way that they just missed it. Fit them in a way that they just collapse so they snap off and the best way to do that I reckon is use this. This is the old curtain pole. That's the curtain pole they came from and they just fit it on the end. Um, and that was kind of, we've had these for years and years and years, it's kind of like a 1980s thing, I think we had these in our first house and I just chucked them in the cupboard forever. Um, never going to use them again so what I thought was I'd cut that up in certify the length of that into there connect that in here, perhaps just rivet them in so that I can replace them and just leave maybe that much out and then I can fit yay finials on top and just tighten them up, job done. If anybody falls on it, this stuff being what it is, which is about a mil, that is so thin it's not true. That would be great, that's ideal in that sense because it's steel and it will just fold over. That if you kind of with that enough I reckon you could just kink it and snap it off which is perfect they'll be almost like a default piece which will snap off if I need it to so first thing drill a couple of holes in there all round and then I can line them up so I can fix a few links of this in here we get on all good holes start with center punch all right one there sharp tap um, another one down there Sit. Pilot hole first. As far as it go, I reckon about an inch. There we are. Cut it off. Okay. Universal method of measure. Little sonic. Okay, I'm not squash this. Just about the thinnest tubing on planet Earth.
sacrificial tubes and one spare. Strong, baby. I love rivets. Moment of truth. Now what I've done just for now, these are like a little squeeze screw. This stuff is quite thick. This is about two and a half mil thick pipe. It's quite strong and it's threaded, but obviously that ain't gonna stay on there. Not in a million years. They'll just shake off. So what I think I'll do is drill them right through, drill that subsequently right through and put another knob screw right through it so I can remove them. I want them detachable. They need to be detachable, but I think with that being as thin as that, if they're on there, nobody falls on that, it's just going to collapse and bend over, which I think is a safe way to do it. Let's get out in the light. Just stood there for now, ain't got the clamp on. That's the general idea. There we go, that's the next stage. Next step chains, but not today. of the very silly project rat trailer. Start a little bit more Adam's family now which is what uh, which is the direction we intended and uh, once the chains are involved um, and I've got some hemp rope which we just had delivered today uh, at uh, up at the shop and uh, that's going to play a part in it too. So it's going to get a little bit sillier. Uh, lights wise I'm not sure yet. I still may just wing it. I'm not so sure. Wiring the bike up for lights means relays means putting uh, extra strength into the fuse system. These things are pretty standard. I'm going to put two of those on the back of the number plate. I thought that might just be enough. Now I know, I know, I know, I know I need a light rig. But to be honest, 
it's not even three feet wide across the back and the minimum size light board is three feet so it's it's really hard to fit uh, all of that in to get lights and a number plate and the reflectors all on the back of this I might just be able to get away with it you can tell I really don't want to do it there you can tell I just can't be bothered I hate wiring I really really hate wiring I can do it ain't a problem one wire at a time connect A to B piece of cake don't let the smoke escape but I just hate it it's just boring and miserable I like doing silly things with ratification so there we go there's a bit more and some winter ride tips winter riding I'm going to ride every single ride I need to make regardless of the weather I love it when the snow comes and the ice it's great you take it easy and I think it makes you a better rider um, maintaining your bike in the winter is the same as maintaining it all the rest of the year just more often and every single ride. Take some attention to your bike every single time you come home. Get your bike home after a day's work or a day out on the bike, get it in the garage, rinse off the salt and the, the grit and the stuff that comes. If you live in a rural area you know what I mean already but if you live in the town there's still a lot of dust on the roads. Clean the bike off, lubricate the bits that need lubricating and those fork sliders, keep them oily, keep a bit of GTA 5 on them like I showed you earlier and you'll be surprised you'll get through the winter with nothing wearing out. It's pretty cool. And obviously tire pressure is very important in the winter because uh, they don't get hot, so they don't get soft, so they're not malleable, they don't grip as well, so the tire pressure is essential to keep the carcass shape correct on the road, which is essential to keep the bike on the road. So there you go. That's for all now. I'm not going to waffle any longer. That was part 33. Take it easy. Ride safe. Let's get through the winter and I'll see you. Well, next one.